Hello, um, spiritual parenting, and this is the Bible study portion for the discipleship process, and this is What's Next, Part 7. I got a hair. It's bugging me. Sorry. What's Next, Part 7. So if you have your Bibles, I strongly recommend you get them out, and we're going to break apart these scripture verses, and we're going to discuss them and talk about them. We have one, two, three, four, at least five to go over today, okay? So the first one, if you will turn to Matthew chapter 10 and go to verse 32, okay? And verse 33. Verse 32. Okay, it says, Whoever acknowledges me before men, meaning Jesus, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. Okay? But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Okay. That is very cut and dry. Um, it says, if you acknowledge me before men, if you acknowledge Jesus, if you say, I know who Jesus is, I trust Jesus, I believe Jesus, I'm a Christian then he says he's going to acknowledge you before his his father, which is God. And then it says, but whoever disowns me before men. So if you say, I don't know Jesus, I don't want to be a Christian, I don't want any part of that type of lifestyle. Then he says, I'm going to disown you before my father in heaven. Um, <clears throat> so the question is, one of the things that on this study that I was reading, it says, how does the assurance of salvation manifest or show itself in your public testimony? If you are, if you say that you have accepted Christ and you are a Christian, then you are supposed to publicly acknowledge him and say, yes, I love Jesus. I'm going to serve Jesus in everything I do. I'm going to talk about Jesus. Um, now I know that there are different personalities out there, but if you're the type of person that says, I just, I just keep it to myself and I don't talk about it. I don't discuss it. That's not going to help anybody. Okay. You can pray for people, but you need to publicly acknowledge Christ to people because if you're not going to do that, he's not going to publicly acknowledge you before God. So think about that. Okay. And ask God, if you are, um, I guess, shy, uh, I don't have a shy bone in my body, so it's never been a problem for me, but there are people I know that are out there that are shy, and they really, truly struggle with this. Um, but I would just start asking God to help you be able to be a little more bolder in your faith when, when it comes down to it. So if you're out and about and you can share, share Christ. Okay, um, <coughs> excuse me, I just realized I didn't pray, so I guess we need to pray. Lord, I ask you to bless today, uh, bless the hearts and lives that are listening today. I ask you, Jesus, to um, put a fire in hearts, these people that are, are possibly newer Christians, or even if they're old Christians, that, you know, that they'll learn something new today. And that they'll be able to apply it to their life and teach it to, if not someone else, their children. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so if we go the next one, Hebrews. Okay. Hebrews is back here in the back of the New Testament. I gotta get to it. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 22. Ah. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart. Excuse me. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. And then verse 23 says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, 
for he who promised is faithful. Okay, so the question on this one says, what produces full assurance? Full assurance of what? Our salvation, okay? Hebrews 10, 22 and 23 says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our body washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. <sighs> if God says it, then that's how it is. Whether you like it or not, that's how it is. Um, if you draw near to God with a sincere heart, you have the assurance that he has cleansed you. Okay? I believe that's the biggest thing is um, I'm not God, so I don't know how it all works per se as far as for his brain because I don't have his brain. But if you are truly sincere, and he knows because he's God, if you are truly sincere in your want and your need for him, he knows that because by George, he's God, and he made you, and he knows your brain, he knows your heart. You're sincere. He is giving you this promise right here. The assurance of your faith is he's cleansed you from a guilty conscience, and you have had your bodies washed with pure water. What's the pure water? Him. He's pure. There's not one bad thing about him. And then verse 23 says... Let us hold unswervingly. I love that word, unswervingly. So if it's, you know, this is like swerve, unswerve would be straight, okay? Hold on straight. So there's no swerving. There's no crooks or crooked or crook, whatever. Nutch, nick, whatever, okay, in the road. You hope in, <clears throat> in, the, in the hope you profess, okay, is Christ. And he has promised he will be faithful. So once you ask Christ in your life and you're sincere about it, boom, it's done. It's awesome. So, all right. So since God has given us all these promises, what do we make him out to be if we fail to believe them? Well, let's see what the Bible says. First John chapter 5 Verse, verse 10. Now I want you to get this because this is important. 1 John chapter 5 verse 10. Okay. Anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. Anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. Okay. Anyone who does not believe God has made has made him out to be a liar because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his son. Okay, I'm going to read this one more time. Anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. That testimony is knowing that you are a child of God. Okay, that he died on the cross uh, to save you from your sins, to clean them up, and then he rose again, third day, and then he resurrected and he's with God now in heaven. Okay? That's the testimony. Then the second part of verse 10 is anyone who does not believe God. So if you do not believe God, and you don't believe this testimony, you have made him out to be a liar. Let me tell you, God is not a liar. Satan is a liar. And the reality is, is you're falling for the lie of Satan. Okay? Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his son. That's pretty point blank. Okay. All right. Where are we at? Okay. Study John 5, 24. Study, it says. Okay, so study. We're going to go to John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. John chapter 5. 
<laughs> if you've ever done Bible study, say you haven't, and you're just getting into this, this is how it is. This is what you do. You go to the scriptures and you look them up and read them and what I call dissect them. If you don't know a word, you look it up. Um, you figure out what it means and when you're done, you ask God to help you apply all of it to your life. It does no good to read it if you don't use it, okay? John 5, chapter 24. I know I say that all the time, but it's the truth. So hopefully, after I've said it 500 times, you'll get it and start doing it. <laughs> it's starting to sound like my dad now. <laughs> okay, I can't see with that. All right. Tell what you know is true in your past, present, and future according to this verse. All right, so John chapter 5, verse 24. Well, where'd it go? Oh, I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. Now, condemned, remember we've talked about if you're condemned, it means you're being punished by death. He has crossed over from death to life. Woo-hoo! Yay! Okay, so if we take this verse, what you know, tell what you know is true, excuse me, in your past, present, and future, according to this verse. Okay, my past. Hmm. According to this verse, Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Well, think about it on your terms. Okay, not Sarah's. But I'm going to use mine because I'm me. Okay, but think about it for you. So for your past with this verse, what do you, as far as tell, you, tell what you know is true? In your past well for me in my past it would be um, I was saved when I was six six years old and then I rededicated my life when I was ten so that the ten years or six years prior I would have literally it's wiped out as far as the sin so I know that much um, thank the Lord. It's so cool. And that's, that would be that way for you too, depending on how long it would have been from the moment you asked Christ into your life. Okay. So your past is been blotted out because Jesus blotted it out. Okay. Present right now. Um, let's see, let's read it again. I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Right now, I just have faith that I know that all this is, is correct and is right. And that is cool. Love that. It's my present. I'm good. You're good. It's a hope. That's so cool that I know I'm good right now. I don't have anything to worry about. I don't have anything to fear. I'm not condemned. I have hope in the future. And then future, I'm going to heaven. And I'm going to be there forever. Um, I'm going to see my dad again. I'm going to see my uncles and my aunt and my grandmas and my grandpas. Um, I'm going to see Brother Danner. I'm going to see Brother Medley. I'm going to see a lot of people that I haven't seen since they passed away. So that's so cool. Very cool. <laughs> Okay, are you a child of God because of how you feel or because of your faith and obedience to God's word? 
You are a child of God because of your faith and obedience to God's word, not because of how you feel. There's days when I wake up and I can feel defeated or just it's a rough day. Thank God we don't go on the feelings because this word is what matters. Have you had doubts about your salvation since you've been saved? I know I get this a lot in children's church. I'll have a lot of times the little kids will come up and say, Miss Sarah, I'm not sure I'm, I'm not sure I'm a Christian. I keep feeling like I may not be a Christian. And I tell them many times, you know, now if they've sinned or something, we just ask Jesus to clean their hearts again and we, we move right on. Um, same, same difference with you. If you know you've sinned and you've done something wrong, you do need to get your heart cleaned out. That's just all there is to it. But there's also something that the enemy, I, I like to say, is he's a jerk. And he's really, really good at what he does. He's a scumbag. And he'll put lies in your mind and in your heart. And you have to learn how to discern them and know that he is wrong. And you have to know it's him. And uh, he will bug you and bug you and bug you and bug you and say that you're not a Christian. You really didn't mean that. You didn't really ask Christ in your life. And he's really not going to do anything for you. That's a bunch of hogwash. Because Jesus did not go through what he went through for that piece of puke. Okay? He did it for you because he loves you. All right? So don't listen to the lies of Satan because that's exactly what they are. They're all lies, okay? So if we read John chapter 10, this will help you. Verses 10 through 11. <laughs> I love this. I love it after I get done saying something. Then boom, the word just backs it up. Okay. John 10, 10 and 11. The thief, which is Satan, comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And I, which is Jesus, have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Do you get that? He came so that you would have life and that you would have a full, incredible, wonderful, beautiful, prosperous life. Satan is doing everything he can to shut it down. And I got news for him. He lost. He knows he lost, and he's ticked off. Well, too bad, so sad. Verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And that's exactly what he did. He died for you. Don't listen to the lie because Satan wants to steal from you, kill you, and destroy you. And not just you, but everybody you're encompassed with, everybody that's in your life. He wants to obliterate them. He doesn't want them to have anything to do with God. You have to know the difference and pray against it and rebuke him in Jesus' name. Okay? Okay. It says, who is the thief? The thief is Satan. And he likes to tell us that we are not really saved. And we know that we are. Okay? The thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus has come so that we may have life and have it to the full. Grab these verses. Oh, Take this verse, these two verses, and write them down. Okay? And put them somewhere where you're going to see them every day. Because it's going to keep you on track of knowing... This is God's words, and this is the pathetic Satan's words. And I, if when these pathetic words start to bug me right here, immediately jump on to, I am the good shepherd. I have come to give you life and to the full. That is his mission. That's what he's done. He's already won. This one over here is a lie. Don't listen to it and rebuke it, okay? I don't care how much longer you live. He's going to lie to you and try and steal from you and try and destroy you knock him out with jesus okay do that 
You've got to, and you got to learn how to do it, and you got to learn how to do it now, and you got to learn how to do it like every day, because the more you grow in your faith with Christ, the more he's going to try and bug you. That's just how he is. I don't like it, but it's the truth, okay? Write these verses down, John chapter 10, verses 10 and 11. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays his life for, lays down his life for the sheep. Grab one of those verses, know them by heart, and remember them and use them against Satan. Okay? All right. My next question would be, has this helped you overcome any of your doubts about salvation? It does me. I've learned over my many years that Satan's a liar. There's a new song out right now that uh, fear is a liar. And guess where fear comes from? It comes from Satan. God doesn't put a fear in you. God puts hope and future. Now, I have a healthy fear of God because I have to because he's God. And I don't want to tick him off or mess him up. You know what I'm saying? But fear, fear that, that cripples you and keeps you from doing things that God wants you to do is from Satan. And it's a liar. He's a liar. He is the father of lies. So, remember that. All right? And if you've asked Christ in your life, you've asked him to be the ruler of you, it's happened. Okay? It's happened. And, and it will continue to be that way. As long as you continue to live for him and stay in his word and do everything that you can to love on him. Because he will love you right back. Because Jesus is everything good and everything right. Um, I can't say enough good about Jesus because there's not enough words in the English vocabulary that would even do him justice. A lot of times I just kind of sit in awe of him when I think about him and what, what I don't even really completely understand because I have a human brain and, and I don't always think about the supernatural part of it all because I don't know how capable I am of it. But God is good and he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. I don't know how else to put that. Love, true, true love, pure love. He loves you. Lord, I thank you for today. And I just ask you, God, that you will move mightily among the people that see this and hear this. Change their hearts and change their lives. Help them grow in you. And we rebuke Satan from them in every aspect in Jesus' name. I love you, Lord. I love you so much. And I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I think that's it.